17 to 3 now. We're also going to welcome the uh, starting quarterback of the 7 and 1 Minnesota Vikings, Kurt Cousins. Kurt, uh, before we talk about all your success this season and everything going on and how well you are playing, first, I really want to talk about your post game outfit that you were sporting yesterday after the win. And I know we'll get to a little video here in a second. There's you on the plane are you look cold is that because you're not wearing a shirt or because all the ice around your neck right there <laughs> i think a little of both eli we uh really started coming back from our game against the saints a few weeks ago coming back from london you know we had the eight hour flight home and they kind of turned first class on that flight home into a nightclub and so uh, uh before i knew it i had christian derisaw's chain around my neck and everybody was taking photos and posting them on social media and then the next away game they they, uh, we beat Miami, and they were throwing even more chains at me, and, and it turned into a Halloween costume here in Minnesota. And then uh, this week, they're like, well, how do we top it? And I'm sitting there like, I don't really think there is a way to top it. And they go, take your shirt off. So next thing you know, I got my shirt off. I got Zadarius's watch on my wrist, and they're telling me all the dance moves I need to do with my hands. So uh, if we keep winning these away games, I don't know where this is going to go, but I'm kind of nervous of where, where it could end up. <laughs> I hope you have What's a speedo that? ready. <laughs> hey, we'll take it. We'll take. I mean, and Kurt, now Adam Schefter is imitating you on the pregame show on Monday night. I mean, you're starting a trend here. Oh, wow. Geez. No, we don't have to show this that. We don't have to actually it's, show that. Turn it off. Talk about it. <laughs> Please geez. turn it off. I don't want to watch. I can't watch. That. He even had the blue light blocking glasses that I wore because <laughs> uh, I put on those blue light blocking glasses to try to get ready to go to sleep when we landed in Minnesota, and Schefter even had a, had that to complete the ensemble. Oh, there we go. Who wore Ooh, it best? It was right the ice. There. I'm going with I'm going with cousins. I'm cousins going with win. cousins all the way. The glasses. Easy. The glasses did it right there. That's like completes the look for sure. Hey Kirk. Hey Kirk, you coming on here? The Saints finally get some offense, so we appreciate it. Hey, you guys are rolling. You talk about these plane rides. These plane rides are fun after a win. First place in the NFC North. Big comeback win yesterday. What's working so well for the Vikings this year? You know, it's really been an interesting combination because, uh, uh, you know, one game it's special teams making some big plays for us, giving us field position, making big kicks. Uh, another game it's defense, you know, great pass rush, creating turnovers, giving us a short field. And another game it's, you know, Justin Jefferson making some big plays or Dalvin Cook going off for a big game running the football. So it's really been a real team effort to get to 7-1. and one. I really think we haven't played our best football yet. Um, so there's still a little more out there for us to go get, but um, great to be able to, you know, dissect these games and talk about how we can be better after a win. You'd much rather have those conversations after a win than after a loss. No, no doubt about it. Eli, they went with Hill at quarterback right there. Yeah. Andy on the sidelines. Nice little throw there on the deep hook route. Oh, there's a little Lamar zone read. Kirk, y'all have that play in your playbook? You know, we've done a little zone read through the years. I think if you if you do it infrequently enough, it can be effective and you can catch people off guard. But uh, I'll tell you what, I remember when I came into the league and obviously I was backing up RG3 and there were a lot of successful running quarterbacks. I remember thinking is the drop back quarterback, the Peyton Manning and Eli Manning, if you will, is that going to get phased out of the league? I said that to my quarterback coach and he, he looked at me and he Please said, no. Kirk, no matter what skill set you have, no matter how much athleticism you have, you have to be able to drop back, go through a progression, and throw with accuracy. And if you can do those things, then yes, being able to run a 4-3 and make people miss is a huge skill set to have. But at the end of the day, it's always going to be about dropping back and, uh, and throwing with accuracy. No doubt about it. Big hit right there. Andy was the trying to go through that progression. It will be third down. Ooh, they called him down. Caught them down. They better, they gotta hurry up. They want a quick snap this hurry one up. Right here. Hurry up on a third down. Kurt, do you hurry up to try to prevent the challenge or do you get the. I think, it was, I think it might be right. He had like, he's holding it. I'll enough. let Kurt call it. I'll let Kurt call it. You don't know what you're talking about. Kurt, what do you think? Fumble? Hmm. No. Ever since the tuck rule, I don't know what to think. <laughs> I, don't think I think he had, he had possession of it. It did not. I think it's. I think it's down. Hard to say. I do Baltimore think that uh, you definitely want your beat a challenge play uh, ready to go down. when uh, plays Time like out. this happen. He's got it. 
This will be interesting. Kurt, stay Rob. with us, pal. Justin Houston still Let's doing see what it. happens here. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Baltimore All right, the call stands. will be third down here. Hey, challenge. Kurt, you're 34 years old. Your new head coach, Kevin O'Connell, is 37 years old. Don't you think it's kind of annoying, and he was a former quarterback, a little annoying when you have, like, this former quarterback that's only, like, a few years older than you, but he's just constantly giving you feedback over and over and over again. Like, isn't that, like, a little bit annoying? I'm just – I'm asking for a friend who's kind of got that same situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see how that can get a little bit annoying. Sounds like you got some history there, but uh... – it's been great working with Kevin. He's done a great job. It's like you said, it's you know seven and one. It's not easy to get there, and you got to have a head coach who knows what he's doing and is uh, you know putting you in the right positions and building the right culture. So it's been a great start, and uh, excited to see where we can take this thing. Kirk, the uh, Saints could I gotta have, ask uh, you guys uh, having you on in the in the, in the in the in the first half because it's the first time they've moved the ball since you've been on. So stay on as long as you want, pal. <laughs> Go ahead. What's your question? Go ahead. I hear you. I got, I got to ask you guys, you know, speaking of the Saints not moving the football much, I do feel like offensive football quarterback play has not really been up to the standard that I'm used to in my 10 years in the league. Uh, now in year 11, it just seems like this year has been a step back, and I've kind of been asking myself what to attribute that to. I didn't know if you guys had any thoughts that you're seeing around the league of how teams are defending us uh, quarterbacks or what you see as to a reason maybe why offensive football isn't quite at the level it's been in the past. Yeah, it's hard to put a, you know, kind of an answer on all 32 teams, right? Everybody kind of has their own issues. Certainly, you know, Minnesota is rolling right now. You know, the Bills got beat the other day, but their offense is playing good. So it's still kind of team by team. It does seem like defenses are kind of ahead of some offenses right now with some of the things they're doing. Good decision there by Andy. Good patience there. But, yeah, I mean, Look, I'm not a fan of it. I'm an offensive guy, Kurt. I want to see points. I want to see third down conversions. But you're right. I think the defenses seem to be a little bit ahead right now. Yeah, I know I have you to thank for a few of the rules that have favored offensive players over the years. (laughs) You you know, some of the off-season also. Off-season is not as long. It's a little bit shorter. You kind of have all these restrictions and rules. You can't kind of be with your, you know, with your coaches and going over things and, and having all your players there, to, you know, just go one-on-one, do routes first air, just work on all those fundamentals where once you get to the season, all that's down, you're kind of having to start over from square one in June, and you don't have as quite as much time just to work on the fine-tuning of some things. Hey, Kirk, uh, second and seven so another here. Thing, uh, yeah. Are, are, are second and seven here, are the Vikings telling you, hey, you're in four-down territory? I think the Saints have got to go for it here if they get to fourth down. Tell me how that factors into your thinking on your second and third down decisions. Yeah, I think obviously the play caller factors that in more than anything uh, coming in the sidelines from Kevin. But certainly, you know, if you know you have two downs, you might be a little more aggressive on second or third down, take a shot at the end zone. Um, you also may, you know, run the football here and put yourself in a, in a manageable third down situation where you basically get two short yardage plays now with third down and fourth down. That's what happened. We played the Ravens last year. It was so hard to get them off the field because when they're in third and four or less, they're just going to treat it like they've got two straight (laughs) third and short plays and just go for it on fourth down. And it was hard to get the ball back because of the way they can just pound the rock with their fullback, tailback, and their their read game with with Lamar. All right, what do you like here, third and four, Kirk? They're coming after him, Pate. Yeah, it looks like the Ravens have got everybody up on the line of scrimmage, potential for... Single high man or cover zero. zero. God, hey. Free runner. Now you're free runner, the goal, right. I guess, unless they feel they got to get points. It just looked like he didn't think. So it was that cover zero. Was that brings unblocked. up a question I have for you guys. I've I noticed a lot more cover got? zero as well around the league this year. I feel like defensive coordinators are not afraid to bring zero at any time. Uh, I've always felt zero, you know, kind of is its own world. And kind of wanted to get your thoughts when you would see zero what your attack plan was. Did you like throwing a quick element? Did you like max protection? Did you like getting to a screen? Did you like taking a double move? I mean, how did you like to attack zero uh, when you were seeing it a bunch? I'm glad you asked, and it's perfect. We have a commercial. I'm going to go back to my house, get some of the old notebooks, <laughs> get the cobwebs off, and see what my cover zero answers are. I'm not sure that the rest of the NFC North is going to like me helping 
the Vikings quarterback, but I'll see what I can find. Welcome back. We have Kirk Cousins with us still. That's a good view of good old New Orleans. Kirk, I'm having to send all my old playbooks down to Jeff Saturday in Indianapolis. I'm FedExing them right now. I don't know if you saw, but uh, breaking news there at Colts. So, sorry, Vikings, I can't help you. Kirk, last season, you scored a touchdown and you attempted to do the gritty. Now, I'm told this was a big deal on the internet. It got mixed reviews, but there was good news for you this season. The internet said that Miami's Mike Gesicki's gritty might have been worse than yours. Let's show both videos and can we get your analysis of both performances? Absolutely. Right Let's after the kick here. <laughs> All right, here we go. I, I definitely set the gritty back a few years. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think for a lot of reasons, mine's a little bit better than Mike's. I, I heard Mike tried it again like a week or two later, and it was improved. So I'm hoping I could do, maybe do the same thing if I could get a rushing touchdown, which are hard for me to find. But if I can get a rushing touchdown, uh, maybe I could do one and show my my improvement that I'm that I'm uh, having there on the gritty. <laughs> Or we've also we've asked you to come I on the show. I told Justin like I'll only do it if I have a rushing touchdown. Fair enough. We've asked you to come on the show like ten times, and you kept saying no. And we finally figured out you were waiting for a Saints game at home because you knew we would show that you know walk off touchdown in the 2020 wild card game where you hit Kyle Rudolph in the fade. They said you were very excited about that play call. You wanted that. You know, tell us a little bit of how that all played out. That was cover zero. I mean, that was that was third and goal. You know, in overtime, if you score a touchdown, the game's over. If you kick a field goal, Drew Brees gets the ball back, and you never know what could happen. So Dennis Allen chose to bring cover zero in that moment. Our zero alert was throwing that fade to Rudy and put the ball up, and he made the play, and that was it. Game over, and the place went from, you know, sounding like the standing next to an airplane engine for three hours to suddenly being <laughs> quiet as could be. Um, that was easily the loudest game I've ever played in in my life. But a uh, uh, special place to play, certainly in the Superdome. You guys know it well. I remember, Eli, when you, you played there in 2015, I remember you threw about six touchdowns in that game in that shootout with Drew, and uh, that was an unbelievable game. I remember watching a lot of tape of that one. Yeah, and uh, Drew, yeah, Drew threw seven. He actually threw eight because he threw a pick six, <laughs> and it still counts as a touchdown. But I think that was a seven on seven that day. We, they said no pass rush. We just let us play like flag football. For one the game, defense. so that was a fun one. I remember we lost. played uh, the Saints defense like two weeks later, and watching that tape, I was like, "Man, this could be a fun day for us if this Saints defense <laughs> is is as bad as they are uh, against the Giants." And they actually were that bad again against us. And I ended up with a perfect passer rating, the only quarter. one in my career. So uh, we both got to feast on that defense that year. Yeah, they, uh, they had some issues going on, but they're, they're a little bit better now. Let's see if they can stop uh, no doubt. Lamar here. Stay with us, Kirk. All right, welcome back. Kirk, i got to ask you about some of your catchphrases. You obviously, you know, kind of the one that's most known is the, you know, you like that, and you did that in Washington 2015. But i got to say, the other one, that I, I feel like it gets a little bit overshadowed, the uh, ooh-wee, you know, that uh, you've used. <laughs> and let's listen. let's listen right here to both of them. Get as much love. That doesn't get quite as much as love. Which one do you like better? Yeah, I'm a you like that guy. That one died pretty quick. That started with Quentin Dunbar, one of our corners back in Washington, and I, I picked up on it. And uh, for whatever reason, it didn't have quite the same staying power as you like that. I mean, we were in the stadium in Washington just yesterday, and you still heard it. You still saw signs. Uh, the team was calling for it after the game. So. Uh, that may follow me, like I said yesterday, you know, not just for my football career, but probably for the rest of my life. I still oh, hear I it, too, when I get sacked. Usually the defensive end that sacks me <laughs> walks off the you field like and yells, you like that, you know? You know, listen in real quick here. You like that! You like there that! It is. Who are you talking to? You like that! Who are you saying that to? You like that! Media? That, was, uh, that was a reporter for the local... Uh, NBC affiliate that covered our team and he was a great guy uh, but uh, uh, you know I there were some people and rightfully so <laughs> I hadn't been playing that great for those first six games but there were some people who kind of felt the the Kirk Cousins experiment should be over in Washington 
and uh, we had that big comeback win when we were down 24 nothing, ended up winning 31 30 and I kind of felt that you know walking off the field walking through that tunnel that hey you may not like me you may not want me to succeed uh, but what just happened on the field right there you like that <laughs> and it really wasn't a question it was a statement with an exclamation point I'm not really giving you the choice to like it or not I'm telling you you like it <laughs> I love it I love it all right, we're in the fourth quarter. Kirk, I know you got to go to bed. Keep it going, buddy. Proud of you. Yeah. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks for being a part of this, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Kirk. No, always an honor to connect with you guys. Thanks so much for what you've meant to football and beyond. And uh, thanks for having me on. Appreciate you guys. All right, buddy. All right. Good luck.